we have spread our warp and now we're going to do double weave but let me tell you the sequence and then i'm going to show you the sequence so first off you need to understand that shell stick b when you turn on its side opens a bottom shed that you're going to use for the bottom layer of cloth or the bottom side of a folded piece of cloth Heddle A also controls the bottom layer of cloth. So B, pick up stick B, and heddle one. So the first heddle, this heddle right here, is what controls the bottom layer of cloth. Pick up stick A, turned on its side, and the second heddle, picked up in the up position is what controls the top layer of cloth. Now, for double weave, we are going to weave, we're gonna start on our right, we're gonna to go to our left. We're gonna weave a pick on the bottom, a pick on the top, and then we're gonna go, because we want this side open, we're gonna to go, to go back and we're gonna weave a pick on the top and then finish by weaving a pick on the bottom. So the pattern for double width weaving. So our finished piece of cloth, if we continue this pattern throughout the whole warp that's on this loom, is gonna be twice as wide as what you're seeing right here. This right here is just our spreading, this is the beginning of the, of the um, just to spread our, our loom. We're going to start now weaving the double width pattern that will make this piece, the this, this width doubled. So it's gonna be twice as wide when we're done, all right? So again, it goes like this. So since B controls the bottom, and then we need to go to the top, and then we need to go back across the top and then go back to the bottom, we're gonna go B, right to left, heddle two, left to right on the top, pick up stick A, right to left on the top, heddle one down, left to right on the bottom. Again, let's do it again. Pick up stick B, right to left on the bottom, heddle two, up, left to right on the top. Pick up stick A, right to left on the top. Heddle one down, left to right on the bottom. Okay, so you get it? I'm gonna say it as I weave. So now, here's the thing. Are you noticing that I'm not using these, the, the notches? In order to weave double weave, double width weaving or any type of um, you know double weave on this particular loom, because it doesn't have, it's not made to have an, a, a, a section cut out for two heddles, we're gonna pretend like this isn't here. And we're gonna weave on this loom like you would weave on a Becca 10 inch loom. So um, <laughs> all you cricket people, be thankful that I, I bought a Becca before I got a Cricut because, because I learned how to weave on a Becca 10 inch loom, I am able to teach you how to use your Cricut loom to do double weave because the Becca 10 inch loom doesn't have any type of heddle things. It's just, it's, it's a different beast, but um, yeah, it opened my mind to be able to understand how to do this. So you don't need these things, you don't need to use these um, notches in the side of the loom in order to weave this. So just pretend like they're not there and all will be well. So the first thing is we're gonna get pick up stick B and we need to bring pick up stick B actually beyond, we're bringing it beyond this part where it has the cutouts. We can't weave with it back here because it won't, it will not, um, you won't be able to see the shed. So we need to bring it all the way up in front of the cutouts to turn it on its side, so that you're gonna get your first shed, which is the bottom, and you're gonna weave your first pick right 
to left on the bottom. And then you're going to beat with the front one. All right? You're going to put that down, push it back, and now you're just going to pick up, manually pick up, this back heddle. And you're going to go left to right on the top. You don't have to hold it longer than it takes for you just to put the thing through. And you're just going to... Now, people always ask me in um, a rigid held group that I'm, I'm a part of how I get my sides and my edges so straight. It's really simple. I'm really careful about using the weaver's angle. So I, you see, you'll see me use the angle. And I also make sure that I don't pull this super tight. So there's always going to be a little bit of slack on my side, you can't, you may not be able to see it, but there's a good little bit of slack over there. And I leave that slack in there. And as I continue, because I'm not pulling it tight and because I use the weaver's angle, my sides are straight. So anyway, side note, we're gonna beat. Now, we're going, we're on the top piece or the top piece of the folded fabric. We're gonna get pickup stick A, turn it on its side, and we're going to go right to left and this is the top. And we're going to do our weaver's angle. We're going to beat. Now, to do the bottom and to complete our sequence of four, we're going to push heddle one down and we're going to go left to right on the bottom. The reason why I think it's important for you to, to understand this is that say you go, you go away and remember, we're not pulling this tight. We're leaving slack so that it, it's, we're not gonna leave a ton of slack so you don't have a bubble, but you don't wanna make it super tight so that your, your edges are straight if that's important um, to you. Now, generally speaking, if I'm weaving on like my big 24 inch loom, I'm not really pressed about my edges that much. Um, I'm okay with wonkiness because I am freestyling. But being that I am wanting, um, <laughs> I don't wanna have some type of weird dip in the middle of my fabric I do pay more I take more care on at least this side and also this side so that I don't have a a my thing doesn't start to concave in in some weird way all right let's do this again the reason why pick up stick B on its side and remember we're going to bring it all the way to the front so we can actually see the shed we're going to go right to left and this is the bottom layer Gonna hold, get your little arc and beat. Put it back, push it to neutral. To do the top, we're gonna hold pickup stick, we're gonna hold heddle two up. And we're gonna go left to right for the top pick. And we're going to carefully hold that so it's not pulled tight and have an angle. We're gonna beat. Pick up stick A is right to left, and this is a top pick. Beat. Head a one down, left to right for the last bottom pick. Beat. I'm just going to talk through some, I'm not, I'm not going to talk between them. So B. Right to left for the bottom pick. Weaver's angle. Heddle two. Left to right for the top pick. Pick up stick A. Right to left for the top pick. Heddle one down, left to right for the bottom pick. During the months when I was trying to figure out how to weave double weave, what I would use to get confused was because sometimes people would start on this side and be weaving the other way and the and the and it's different. Or people might have people might have been using the heddles in a different order. 
you can do the same thing in a lot of different ways. I'm not going to confuse you by giving you other variations on how you can do this, but from all the books that I have looked at and videos that I've watched that consistently, um, you know, that, that, that show Double Weave, it seems to be kind of a standard thing with rigid heavy weaving where pick up stick A is the top layer, heddle one, pick up stick A is the top layer, pick up stick B is the bottom layer, heddle two is the top layer heddle, and heddle one is the bottom layer heddle. So that's, that I would say, you know, you might want to consider just sticking with that, um, doing, you know, using it as that because as you go on and if you look at books, you can learn how to do all sorts of other neat um, neat things with two heddles, that that generally is the convention that's used with those designations. Now, I don't know everything. I haven't read everything or anywhere near close about riddle heddle weaving, so there could be some type of oddity that I just have not come across. But as far as I've seen, that's what it seems to be. And remember, when you do have, um, pick up stick B, you need to bring it beyond where the notches are in the loom. Now, sometimes the bottom layer is a little bit more to the left of the bottom edges of the bo of the the edge of the bottom cloth is a little bit more to the left. Just just see where it is and pay attention. And as long as you're not joining the two pieces together, you're good. And remember, whenever you're moving your heddles, your pickup sticks are in the back, in neutral. And whenever you're moving your pickup sticks, your heddles are just kind of floating in midair. And so like, say if I went away and I came back, okay, so the thread is over here and this is the top layer. Oh, okay, I need to use pick up stick A. After you do it for a while, you'll realize where you are so that you'll know if you go away and come back, you know, where you need to stop, stop if you stop in the middle of a sequence. Now, what I would probably encourage you to do until you get really comfortable with this sequence. If you don't see your shed and you've turned it back here, nothing's gone amiss. You just need to bring it forward and turn it on its side in front of the notched areas and then you'll be able to see the shed that you need to use to pass your heddle through for the bottom pick, for your first bottom pick. Now, with the Cricut and even the Ashford, you don't have as much of a weaving width in the front. And that's even more so true because of the fact that I have this big area that I use to spread. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to push my, I'm going to push my, put my pickup sticks together and I need to advance my warp. So. I'm just going to let off the brake lean these back and I'm just going to advance it a little bit and then I'm going to put that back on tighten it Tighten it. We're all good. We're all good. Okay. Tighten a little bit more. There we go. All right. So let's continue. So I stopped and I was going, I went right to left and this is the bottom pick. So I know I need to take heddle two and pick it up and go left to right on the top layer. Now, 
I don't want to mess with you too much, but you can get a little fancy and start doing some of the freestyle techniques like you would do if you were weaving on um, a loom that didn't have double layers. So say if I want to do some, just some loops on the top of my cloth. So you see what I'm doing? I'm just making, skipping some threads on heddle A. And it's a little bit easier to do it in your top layer than the bottom. In fact, I don't know if I'd even do anything <laughs> in the bottom layer just because you can't really see what you're doing. But so I did some skips. I did some skips on the top. I'm gonna push that back. I'm gonna push, go down, just weave normal. If you haven't already gone to my website, there's a link. There will be a link in the bottom in the description box and you can go get a copy of my 10 tips and tricks for being more creative on your rigid head loom. And you'll see some ideas that I have. Um, it's a free download. You can just download it and um, it's where I talk about my theories of freestyle weaving. I also have some blog posts about that. Now we're on the top, and so I'm going to pick up heddle one. Wait, B needs to be in the back. Pick up heddle one and go left to right. When I'm doing like patterns or pulls or whatever, whether it be at the top layer of double weave or on the top of um, or just in normal cloth if I'm just weaving full width on my bigger loom. I generally will do a pattern and then sometimes I'll, I'll just do a norm, weave a normal pick and then I'll do the pattern again. So I'm going to come back and I'm going to go just weaving and just skipping over a few, just doing some skips. You don't have to do this. I'm just doing it because I like to add some fun to my weaving. And if I'm weaving double weave, like I can do class swept. If I were going to be doing class swept, the class would be in the top layer. I wouldn't mess with the bottom layer. I am not that adventurous as yet. As soon as I figure out how to do it consistently without like tangling stuff up, I will tell you and show you and blog about it. But for the moment, I'm only doing fun stuff on the top half that I can see. And the rest is just plain weave. few more skips just because and you don't have to do the skips if you're just here for the double leaves ignore me and my skippings but um I'm gonna weave until I finish the shuttle and then I'm gonna be done. Ha ha, you see what I did? I didn't bring it forward enough, so you need to bring it forward. Turn it on its side. And the reason why we bring it forward is so that we actually can see the shed, or at least get a shed. Forget about seeing it. We won't get a shed if it's not forward enough. It may be a little bit strange 
at first, not using your, you know, heddle things, but you really don't need them. They're not... not mandatory that you use them. Okay, so that's the last pick and I've wove that normally. All right, so what I would do is I'm gonna, you know, tie on some thread and continue weaving, but hopefully you understand the process of what you need to do to double weave. So, this is a video on how to set up and double weave on a Cricut loom. I am now <laughs> going to stop this. Well, I'm gonna finish weaving on it probably throughout this week. And I'm going to we um, start shooting the video on how to double weave on the Becca 10 inch loom and show you all that pro process. And I may be weaving something different on that. So this one, um, I just did, I'm doing cotton, cotton, um, you know, a, a worset weight cotton on a fingering or number 10 inch, 10 weight warp. So um, we'll see what I do on the other looms. But anyway, that's all for this video. Please rate, comment, and subscribe. Please check out my blog where you'll find more tips, tricks, and tutorials on how to get the most out of freestyle weave on your rigid heddle loom. Until then, until the next video, see you later. Bye.